Long Beach is squarely on both sides of the climate issue. It is still very much an oil town. It boomed in the 1920s and its boom lasted through the Great Depression. Long Beach has been pumping crude oil ever since. It's using its revenues from fossil fuels to try to adapt to the changing world that's been caused by the burning of fossil fuels. We're having more extreme heat. The sea is rising, major drought, and now an epidemic of wildfires. That seems to be the new normal in California. Long Beach is a fascinating, evolving city. Um, one of the largest cities on the coast of California. In the shadow of Los Angeles, uh, it seems to disappear to some extent. If it were anywhere else as a metropolitan area by itself, it would be a very substantial city. We live on an urban ocean where lots of people make diverse and intense uses of the coastal environment. At the beach, you see very colorful kites of windsurfers. And up paddle boarders. Gondolas. People fishing. So in the background, we have offshore oil platforms, one of the two largest ports in the nation. All of these accoutrements of life in Long Beach in the same frame. That characteristic of sandy beaches is essentially an icon of Southern California. And without the beach, what do you have? Long Beach faces a whole host of potential challenges. Much of its coastline is very low-lying. It's barely a couple of feet above sea level. And as sea level rises, those low-lying areas are threatened with inundation. Then they're threatened with more significant flooding and heavy surf from Pacific storms. The biggest problems with respect to sea level rise are in Belmont Shore, Naples Island, and this three block wide sandbar that's uh, the peninsula in Alamitos Bay. It's a closed system where the sand moves from the end of the peninsula, moves down to toward Long Beach. And so every week it gets trucked back up and dumped on the beach. And that creates a berm that provides protection against flooding. It's not a very efficient way of doing it. On the peninsula that contains multi, multi-million dollar beachfront homes. You can hear the ocean, but you can't see the ocean. All these problems fall into a category that are called wicked problems. They are problems that are hard to define. They're problems for which there is no solution. But if you do it, if you frame them properly, you can manage them to what the Rand Corporation says to minimize regret. Sea level by the end of the century will probably rise by at least four feet. The highest elevation on the entire peninsula is seven feet. But the challenge is, if the peninsula goes, there's nothing to protect Naples and Belmont Shore. Well, how much time can we buy while we figure out something for the long term? You can see the fossil fuel world and you can see the environmental enhancement that's going on. In the Los Cerritos wetlands, you find these skipjack pumper wells right next to a sign that talks about the restoration of the natural wetlands area, and it has its cleverly disguised oil islands. In order to prevent the eyesore of an oil platform, Long Beach had these very cleverly designed Hollywood-esque oil islands built in the harbor. And those oil islands include waterfalls and palm trees, and behind that facade are oil wells, oil storage tanks, and all of the infrastructure of the fossil fuel industry. I believe most people who live in Long Beach, even longtime residents, have no idea what's behind that theatrical wall.
if you look at these offshore oil islands, so their productive lifetimes will be over in the next 10 to 15 years. Well, no matter your politics, I doubt there are very many Californians that want to look at an offshore oil well. Some people, they would rather be on a pristine beach with no reminders of kinds of things we depend upon. For some of us, we find this is beautiful because it is the future. It is the future. We're going to make more uses of the ocean. More of us will live in cities in the future. And, and we should be able to celebrate the diversity of uses. These climate change effects, they're baked in. No matter what we do, the work is going to continue to warm. Sea level will continue to rise well beyond the end of this century. Now, that's not an excuse for not reducing the emission of greenhouse gases, controlling our agricultural emissions, and so on. But we not only have to mitigate, we've got to learn how to adapt. Unfortunately, lots of people in the environmental field are opposed to any kind of engineering solutions. I think it's silly. We have an engineered planet, and the only way we get out of this mess that we've got ourselves into is with engineering and technology and the best science that we have. And on the Cal State Long Beach campus, there are canopies now covering virtually all of the parking lots with solar panels that help power the campus. And that low carbon future is what we must do if we are going to save the planet, because there is no planet B.